God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Presentations. Uh, I'll call on Patrick Adakwe and Mary Agbenyakun uh, to give us a musical performance. This reminds me that I have to strive very hard to enter into heaven. But I'm going to hear wonderful voices like yours. We now do the presentations and fraternal greetings. And uh, we'll begin with the Methodist Church, Ghana. I would expect that the heads of the sponsoring churches will say something at this stage. And so, Methodist Church, uh, Ghana, the Mr. President, sir, I stand here on behalf of your mother church to present to you this fat emblem as an expression of our resolve to ensure that you succeed very well during your tenure of office. <laughs> no. 
beloved in the Lord. We intentionally started with the envelope. And he knows what it takes to take that envelope. He has already been reminded as to what goes with the envelope. But it is all to pledge our preaching support from the people called Methodists as you assume this office. The Methodist people are behind you and we will support your administration to the health. God bless you. Now invite the 1986 year group of the Trinity Theological Seminary. Um, I was also a member of that group. Uh, and so we invite you to come and do your presentation. This is the great 1986 year group of DDS. Very Reverend Professor Johnson, Abena Asamwajidu, happened to be one of us when we entered 1983. We were commissioned in 1986. We feel very honored when he has been uplifted to this position. We are here to say congratulations to you and to also show support. We promise we will always be praying for you. We have something here to present. And uh, permit me to read a bit there. Congratulations, our brother and friend, the very Reverend Professor J. Kwabena Asamoah Jeju, on your elevation to the office of the President of the Trinity Theological Seminary in Legon, 1st November 2018 the class of 1986. In addition, we have this um, addition. Thank you. For you and the family. Thank you very much, our uh, year group. Now we call on the Asbury Downwell uh, Church to do a presentation. May I invite other Council members are here to join me. Let me first say how privileged I am to speak as presiding elder of the Council of Elders and indeed on behalf of the entire congregation and to extend to ministers and to you, the congregation, the paternal greetings of Ashbury Downward Church, popularly known as Hidiji. 
Because for the last time, my wife and I were here to witness the nuptials of a couple who we had counseled. It rained heavily. And I can tell you that seven years down the line, they've been blessed with three beautiful young babies. But I'm not wishing that on you and Theodora. I am here to express the heartfelt congratulations of ADC to you. You are very known as Osofo, Papa Osofo, Prof and Reverend. I'm stuck for Osofo. But allow me in this moment to make three presentations. I think Theodora, would you please help him receive this bouquet? May I invite Auntie Angela to come forward and present Auntie Angela. Our immediate past elder will present the citation. And with your permission, may we help you unwrap because the citation reads and expresses the desires of our hearts. We've been blessed, and uh, what we put here, that's what inspired us. Citation reads Appreciation presented to Reverend Professor J. Pabna Asamwajedu by the Council of Elders and Congregation of Asbury Danwell Church on your investiture as President, Trinity Theological Seminary Ligon. Your immense giftings as a theologian, an insightful shepherd and your practical teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ reveals Christ's heart of love, compassion, and care for the growth of his flock. Thank you, Abba. And our last presentation will be by the entire council. Please hold on to this. And again, may I ask our deputy Deciding how to come and do the unwrapping. Yeah. You can show it to the entire congregation apart from a couple. He can admire it when he gets home. This is a charcoal painting of our beloved pastor. Finally, also, we want to thank the Lord for being a blessing to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now uh, we now invite the Fijai uh, Secondary School, uh, AC 1980 year group to join to do their presentation. very much for this opportunity. Uh, indeed, those of us here are not all 1986 year group. 
1980 year. In fact, when uh, when Prof entered FIDAI Form 1, I think I was in Form 5, is it? Oh, lower 6. I was in lower 6. <laughs> so uh, we want to associate ourselves with uh, this wonderful thing that is happening to our friend and our brother. So on behalf of the old students of FIDAI, we want to hand over this small envelope to you. We believe that the calling that you have received will benefit mankind. And this is something small that we believe would help you to undertake that journey. So on behalf of FIDAI, we say congrats. Better Methodist uh, Tadi also want to make a presentation. Tadi. My student minister is around, so come and join us. As you all know, it was better Takradi that gave out Asofo to be what he is today. Because he candidated from better. So we are so proud what God has been able to do. We've always been praying for him throughout his ministry. We hope that this is one chapter that God in his wisdom has given him we are so proud we will continue to pray that God will put him where he wishes him to be on behalf of the leadership of the Bethel Methodist Church the general congregation this is our small envelope to show our appreciation to Reverend Professor Kabna Asamoa Jedu thank you Bertel did not only produce the professor, he also gave him a beautiful wife, Jodora. So, we say congratulations for what the good Lord has done. You are reminded that there is a gift table at the back. Uh, so, please. We now invite the College of Counseling and Psychology uh, to give their presentation. Oh, we are your mentee institution. We look up to you for guidance. We know you will lead us into the promised land. One day, we will also grow up to become like Trinity Theological Seminary, the Harvard of Africa. Our humble donation. Uh, Gacy uh, Limited has also sent uh, an envoy. The Ghana Institute of uh, Linguistics, Literacy, and Bible Translation, Gilbert, also want to make a presentation. We know that you are an academician. So here we have three translations into Kusal, Gunja, and Sedemi. So that you can have in your library is when they come, you can let them read the word of God. On behalf of Gilbert, I made this presentation. Now, uh, on 
on behalf of the Trinity Theological Seminary, um, I present this envelope. Uh, you know, being until you get to your bedroom uh, from the seminary. Uh, now we have a very special guest of honor uh, in our midst. He is the CEO of Ghana National Petroleum Company, an alumnus of Trinity Theological Seminary. Uh, he finished our MA in ministry in 2015. Uh, Dr. Kofi Sapon, who also wants to make the presentation. to stand a bit because I have to finish my speech before I do my presentation. <coughs> well, a few weeks ago, I came to visit the seminary and the, the then not invested president asked me to come here as guest of honor for this event. I was very surprised because I came here to just receive religious education, not necessarily as a minister of God, uh, religion. So I was wondering why he wanted me to be here, but he said, Asha. so I asked what the formalities were. He said, well, you need to speak for about five minutes. Just five minutes. So you can imagine myself struggling to prepare a speech to deliver when my lecturer is there, as well as um, very eminent religious leaders. But then adventure. I must say that I'm very delighted and humbled to be here to speak at this investor of Reverend Professor Johnson Pabna Asamwa Jedu as the president of the Trinity Theological Seminary. For my professional training and career, I find great comfort in speaking to the financial issues relating to state and private organizations. I must admit, I find my job very satisfying. However, in the course of my career, I felt a, de a deep need to seek deeper knowledge about God. My quest brought me to the Trinity General Seminary, not to be trained to be ordained as a minister of religion, but to fill that deep desire. The vacuum was filled by many of my lecturers here, and I thank them for the impact of my life. Notable among these lecturers was a good professor at Samwajidu who took my class through certain modules. He was a relatively young man, knowledgeable, philosophical, skillful in teaching, but most importantly, open-minded to questions that challenge his own deep-seated faith. I found in him a great solid source of knowledge about African Christian, Christianity, Pentecostalism, and charismatic theology. He was a type of person with whom you could engage in controversial discussions about religion and found profound scholarship in his discourse. I must say I admire him a lot. I'm delighted that he has been chosen as the president of this great theological seminary. I believe he brings a very fresh scholarly aptitude and attitude to Trinity. Professor, while I congratulate you, I implore you to leave a legacy to your members. I direct your attention to two areas. 
first, fundraising, and second, innovation and programs study. As an undergraduate, undergraduate at the University of Ghana in the mid-70s, the Trinity Campus was my favorite sightseeing destination. I came here many times with my, good, my two good friends on Saturdays to enjoy the serene atmosphere, the green vegetation, the lovely horticulture, and the sweet architecture of the old chapel. Today, these beautiful sceneries or surroundings cannot be seen because of the enormous pressures on facilities. Funds are needed to reverse the decaying trend and to add to the existing infrastructure. I humbly charge you, Mr. President, to revolutionize fundraising activities to attract funding from other sources. Perhaps a professional fundraiser will be engaged to raise funds for the seminary and a combination of salary or commission basis. It is imperative that you also cultivate the alumni vigorously to raise funds for this institution. Although some of us came here not to be converted as ministers or to train as ministers, we are able to develop our spiritual thinking and strengthen our faith. Our lives have been impacted in a very positive way. We relate to people better. We attend to our work with more conviction. We appreciate all people, irrespective of their social, economic, or religious backgrounds. I count myself that I'm, I'm listed as a notable alumnus of this institution. I believe there are many non-traditional potential students out there. I encourage you, Professor Samuajidi, to develop and run short courses that speak to their minds and shape their religious interests. Tell us some of these courses to suit the needs and aspirations of corporate executives. And you'll not only be generating funds to run the institution, but you'll be impacting their thinking about their calling to various positions of trust. Mr. Chairman, I find myself I find myself on tricky ground today. But who am I to preach to a professor of Christian religion? However, I have gathered courage to offer advice and I do so conviction. All too soon, people who move into leadership positions forget about certain fundamental values which form the cornerstone of success. These values, such as humility, honesty, hard work, good human relations, and humanity, should be important to the newly installed president of this seminar. I would like to invite you, Professor Samuajudu, to remember Colossians 3.12. There is never a good leader who wallows in pride, greed, and wickedness. It is always good to respect everyone who works for and under you, for respect is reciprocal. Leadership is a position of honor. And as Paul says in Titus 2 7, and I quote, in all things, show yourself to be an example of good deeds purity in doctrine dignified, unquote. May I also remind you, Mr. President, that, and I quote, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, unquote. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, I humbly suggest to you, Mr. President, of this noble institution, to delegate some of your responsibilities in your quest to build up this establishment. I say so because I have 40 years experience in corporate management, and delegation is essential. As admonished by Andrew Carnegie, and I quote, 
No man will make a great leader who wants to do it all himself or to get all the credit for doing it. I also challenge all co-workers of Professor Samuajidu to offer him unwavering support so that together those of this institution can be realized. Accept my congratulations, Reverend Professor Johnson Samuajidu, President, the newest, the freshest President of Trinity Theological Seminar. It is my belief that the Lord who has called you to this position will give you the strength to succeed. God bless us all. I can't find the chair. <laughs> I humbly present you. You will all agree with me that uh, Trinity Theological Seminary has trained Dr. Kofi Safon very well. You can see that. We now invite Trinity United Church uh, to do a presentation. Praise the Lord. Prof, we are here on behalf of the leadership of Trinity United and the Church Council and the entire congregation to support you and also to congratulate you. The joy is that by default you are a member of this church because your wife, Emmanuel, Gilselda, and they also those are active members of this church. So we are here to show our love and our support. I present to you this country, the very fast one. And we pray that the good Lord guides you. The Global Christian Forum also want to make a presentation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, my dear brother, Professor, Professor Samuel Jadu is more of a brother to me than some of my siblings. Sometimes when they are looking for me, they call him to check up where I am in Ghana. By the permission of the Conference of the Methodist Church, I have the privilege of serving the global church. I work in Washington, D.C., but for the last two weeks, I've been in Geneva, came yesterday, and I'll be going back tomorrow. I have the privilege of serving as a secretary to the Global Christian Forum, and it is in that light that I want to make this presentation. You know already it has been said over and over again, and I'm sure you have written yourself that the center of gravity of Christianity has shifted to the non-West world. First time in the history of Christianity, there are more Christians in Africa than anywhere else in the world. What that means is that, yes, let's give glory to God. Let's, let's give glory to God. To the future of Christianity. What we bequeath to our children and our grandchildren is what you all teach here and how you prepare and equip the people who go out to serve the world. So my simple advice is please keep the world in mind. It's not only for Ghana that you are training the ministers. 
the men and women who pass through here may become like Dr. Setunyomi, who served the Global Church at the World Communion of Reformed Churches, and other people who are serving in very, very significant roles. On behalf of the World Council of Churches that is celebrating 70 years this year, it is my honor to make this. Thank you very much, the Reverend Dr. Kisley Samoa. We will now invite the SRC to make a presentation. Um, we want to sow a seed into Baba's life. And then to assure him that the SRC is behind him, will help him to succeed. Our God being our helper. Thank you. <laughs> the chairman of the Governing Council, uh, Right Reverend Gilead uh, K. Dogbe, wants to make a presentation. <laughs> well, I, I am the chairman, but I also stand here as the presiding bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church make a presentation to our brother and friend for so many years. Just to let you know we are happy for you. We assure you of our support. More importantly, we'll pay our assessment on time. Now, the international scholars don't want to be left out. And so uh, they are also uh, doing a short presentation. Let's listen to what they have to say. Kwamina, greetings from Australia. Seems like only yesterday that we were gallivanting around the world together with the study commission on media, religion and culture and then the global seminar program and the Porticus fellowship program. Those groups are a very important part of my scholarly and intellectual development and you are a very significant contributor to that with your distinctive personality and perspectives. I remember very fondly my several visits to Ghana and I still have on my shelf the gift that you gave to Marilyn and I when you visited our home in Melbourne in 2005. I'm glad to see that that work has developed to the point where you're about to take up the leadership of Trinity Theological Seminary and I wish you all the best in that work as it develops. Hello Kwamina. Greetings from Duke University. It is a pleasure to send my hearty congratulations to you and to your family on this special day. There are many things I'd like to say here, stories you can probably imagine from our years of travel together, but time is short, so let me simply say this. I like to think that this is a day that I might have predicted long ago, prophet that I am, when I first met you in Ghana. Because it comes as no surprise to me that you have been chosen for this very important post, one whose duties you will fulfill with the same earnestness and integrity that have marked your entire career, and for which we all love and honor you. Today, your many, many friends around the world send their fond wishes as you take a new step in your journey. My wife and I are happy to be among them, to wish you the very best, and to look forward to the next occasion when we can visit one another. Goodbye, have a great day. Kwabana, 
I'm so pleased to be able to be here today to be part of this celebration of this next stage in your life. I bring congratulations from Karen as well, who sends her warmest greetings to you and your family. You have been such a success and such an important contributor to the global research on scholarship, on African religion, on Indian religion, on visual culture of religion and of materiality. These have all been important landmarks. But you will, I think, also be an important and an accomplished leader as you move forward in the next stage of your life. I look forward to our continuing relationship and to watching what you were able to accomplish in your new role. God bless you and best wishes and Godspeed to you. Carbina, many, many congratulations. This is Julian Mitchell here from Edinburgh wishing you all the very best today and in the weeks to come. I was delighted to hear the news of your appointment as principal and you'll be my thoughts and prayers over the next weeks and months and years. Not just you, but also your family and everyone at the college. So many congratulations and lots of love from us all here in Edinburgh and beyond. Hello, Dick Governor. This is Rosalind Hackett speaking to you from the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. It seems only yesterday that we first met at the University of Birmingham where you were studying for your PhD. Quite frankly, I find it hard to keep up with all your achievements, but they are certainly all richly deserved. I know you primarily as a celebrated scholar of religion, media, and culture in Africa, but I don't doubt that your scholarly insights of prophetic critique will combine well with your vision, compassion, and humor for your new leadership role. I pray that God grant you the strength and wisdom for your future responsibilities I very much hope to come and find you on your presidential seat in the not too distant future and congratulate you in person. Dear Kwabena, congratulations to you from Amsterdam. We have known each other already since the mid-1990s when we were finishing our PhDs. And it is fantastic that we have been in touch over such a long time span. I saw you grow as a scholar someone who really became a big expert on Pentecostalism and politics in Ghana. I'm very impressed by your work and I always read it with much pleasure and I'm also very happy that we managed to be in touch, that we have encountered each other so often in various workshops and other collaborations. I'm very grateful that you were prepared to join our Madina project with a number of other senior colleagues and PhD students here from the Institute for African Studies in Legon. Corbena, I wish you well, I wish you very well for your new fantastic position as the president of Trinity Theological Seminary. I hope that despite all the work and the big responsibilities, you will also be able to continue your amazing and internationally renowned scholarly work. I'm sure all will be well. Congratulations once again. Hi, hi daddy. Today is finally here. Congratulations to you on your appointment. I'm so happy for you and I'm so proud of you. You've achieved so much and you've been such a role model for us to follow and I'm honored to have someone right in my home I can look up to. I pray that everything goes well i wish you well and i know that everything that you do you apply your heart and your mind and you are so dedicated so i pray that god gives you the strength to move trinity to higher heights i believe and trust that you will and i pray that you enjoy this time and that god will equip you with everything that you need congratulations and have a wonderful time bye President uh, gives his response. His beautiful wife, Mrs. Theodora Asamoa Jedu, wants to give God the glory in the Psalm 121. So we invite Theodora to come and chant.
Lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, He will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord that keepeth thee, He will not slumber nor sleep. and members of the Governing Council of the Trinity Theological Seminary, Presiding Bishop of the Methodist Church, Ghana, 
immediate past president, faculty and staff of all categories, beloved alumni and students, my former teachers at the seminary, bishops and ministers. And dear people of God, I begin my response to the best three verses of one of my favorite I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my heart. My soul may be boast in the Lord. Let it come on here and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Amen. The song begins with a collective thanks to God. But it has many other persons to it that speak to my life. These are words that I have cherished since my secondary school days. They have become even more meaningful to me now, more than ever before. I stand here with a sense of profound thanks to God for His mercies and graces that have endured in my life and ministry and have found. Our circle of family and friends has been quite considerable since the marriage of our son, Yoko, and daughter, Michelle. The families on all sides, together with many other loved ones, are here. Teachers, seminary classmates, the young souls of Jackson School, Friends of my sister's own school in the morning, and the pretended minister and members of the Tafra and Bethel Methodist Church, from which I grew up. You are all welcome, and I thank you for being so gracious with your time and resources to make this a memorable day for us. I appreciate what God has done in the presence of everyone who has joined us to the gracious heart of this. The God who will give up on each one of you for the love and support. Today, I stand here with you, before you, as the president of one of the greatest theological institutions of this country. The task is to build on the impressive achievements of my predecessors, the last of whom is the Reverend Professor Joseph O. Y. Manti, also now the moderator elect of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. The calling to head Trinity is a monumental one. Of that, I have no doubt. But I'm even more certain of this fact. The grace to accomplish it can be granted only by the Lord working through his spirit. In the words of Prophet Zechariah, not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit, by my spirit, says the Lord of books. I do not accept this task to make a name for myself. Rather, I do so to fulfill my calling as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Together with the faculty and staff, we shall aim at moving the seminary to greater heights. The Lord being our helper. This is not only a day of thanksgiving, but also of sober reflection on what God wants to do with the seminary under my leadership. My ambition is to provide the sort of godly leadership that is transparent, accountable, and visionary. It will be leadership in which the gifts and graces of everyone are constantly placed at the disposal of the Lord to serve as a blessing to others. I shall aim to inspire and impact those who pass through my hands with a sense of purpose, discipline, and commitment, hard work, and incorruptibility, and washing each other's feet, as Jesus recommends. I want people to see the pastors I have trained and discern in them men and women who are confident in themselves 
and who desire to work for the Lord with singleness of mind, moral courage, and the pursuit of personal discipline and scriptural holiness, believing that God rewards faithfulness. When I was named president of the seminary, I accepted it as an honor for the Lord. Having studied here as a student and having served as a lecturer for more than two decades of my life and ministry, I remained perhaps the longest serving member of the faculty since this seminary was founded. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, I am determined to face the challenges of the seminary calmly but with courage, fortitude, and in the spirit of prayer. This seminary is where most of our ministers are trained and I have always worked with the understanding that whether the church's ministry will succeed or not depends to a large extent on the level of theological training and spiritual formation that the seminarians receive. This means that those of us who are called into the Ministry of Theological Education and Formation deserve our utmost respect and logistical and prayer support. In keeping with that, I have only recently put together a fundraising team to help mobilize resources to rebuild our crumbling infrastructure. Our first assignment has already been planned. On Friday, December 7th, we are holding a Trinity Theological Seminary Donors Prayer Breakfast at the Fiesta Royal Hotel. A good friend of mine has already paid for the use of the venue. We intend at that event to bring together about 100 benefactors to raise an initial minimum sum of 200,000 Ghana cities to help renovate some of the infrastructure. This morning, my friends Patrick and Sandra Anti have donated 100 bags of cement to help us mold blocks for paving our car parking lot. The Lord richly blessed them and prosper the company. We need about 600 bucks more, just in case any one of you may be wondering how you might also help. I will count on the support of all of you in doing this and the subsequent initiatives that are going to be rolled out. On that note of help and support, let me thank my seminary mate personal friend, colleague, now the presiding bishop of the Methodist Church Ghana, the most reverend Dr. Paul K. Buafo, and the Methodist Church Ghana. His office has made available an out-of-budget sum of 150,000 Ghana cities to help renovate the president's bungalow so I can move into it. The Methodist Church Ghana has promised a further 30, 35,000 cities to help renovate a second bundle for another colleague living off campus to be able to move to the campus. I trust that I can count on your collective goodwill, especially the leadership of the sponsoring churches of the seminary, to emulate the example of the Methodists and to help us build on the foundations that have been laid by my predecessors. I remain grateful to the Methodist Church Ghana for nominating me, the Human Resource Committee, under the leadership of Professor Johnny Japon of the, of the seminary for recommending me, and to the Governing Council for endorsing the nomination. My colleagues and I have started working together very well, and I hope to build on that trust to move things forward. It will take just too much to thank everyone personally. The ministers who have helped my formation include the right reverend, the late right reverend Hall in Swamesa, who submitted my name as a candidate for the ministry of the Methodist Church Ghana. The late reverend DKM Okwesi, who oversaw the process of my entry into the Trinity College in 1983. The Reverend, the Right Reverend John Ampia Addison took me as his own son and taught me many deep things of the spirit. 
and the late Right Reverend Joseph E. Ebeatha did his bit in encouraging me as a young minister. I salute each of them with respect and admiration. I studied under two presidents as a student of Trinity, the very Reverend Dr. Sam Prempe and the most Reverend Dr. Samuel Asantinkri, the right Reverend MacLean Kumi and the right Reverend Kweku Asamuachu gave me opportunities as a young minister to put my potential and talents at the disposal of the Methodist Church Ghana. During the period in which I worked as a member of the teaching faculty, I have worked with four other presidents. Reverend Professor Daniel J. Enchi, Most Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante, Reverend Dr. Cyril J.K. Payose, and Reverend Professor Joseph O. Aymante. The chair of the governing council, Right Reverend Dr. Hilliard K. Dogwe, the La Dogwe, has been many things to me. My student, my friend, and my colleague. It can only be by divine design that one of the very first students I taught in this seminary, Bishop Dogwe, today presides over my investiture as president of this institution. I am grateful to him and to all I have needed for various lessons picked up through my interactions with you and your contributions to my ministry and the building of Mother Trinity. I have also had other supportive friends in ministry and the academy, including Emeritus Professor Canon John S. Pobi, the very Reverend Dr. Kwesi Akamisa, and our current Administrative Bishop, the Right Reverend Michael A. Bosman. The most reverend Titus K. Awachi Pratt, the immediate past presiding bishop of the Methodist Church Ghana, who nominated me for this position, and the very reverend Dr. Samuel V. Imperi, both taught me at Vigat. I owe my interest in the study of Pentecostalism directly to the Reverend Professor Elop Dublo, the very Reverend Professor Emmanuel Wailaite, the Most Reverend Dr. Robert Abadimensa, and the late Reverend Professor Kwam Bidiakun, are persons to whom I owe much of my theological thinking and inspiration for ministry. The very Reverend Dr. Kesley Samoa fits the bill as the friend who has stuck closer than brothers. Immense thanks to each of you. Reverend Professor Joshua N. Kudaji has been my teacher, senior friend, and encourager for many years. When I had to name someone to deliver the charge on this occasion, I did not have to think twice. Thank you, sir, for accepting to do this for us. fellows of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, and my students and colleagues, each of you deserve thanks for contributing to my career and for making this day a blessing. Apostle Jude Hammer provides much inspiration and prayer support, encouraging me to see the hand of the Lord in every circumstance. Professor Atu Isuman, Yao and Abba Minka, Dr. Kwabna Kwansa, Esther Koba and her husband, Chachu, Ken, and Angela Ufuriata, all deserve gratitude for being so supportive of my work and ministry and endeavors since our paths crossed. Madame Barbara Baita of Flair Catering Sets and her family always make me feel special on occasions of this nature. I thank them for all they do for me. There are loved ones from the churches I have said. They gone into denominational church, Tema joined church, and two of my oldest friends, Mr. Quarantin Atasiza and his wife. Quarantin Atasiza will be 100 years, just about four, three or four years from today. And Nana Peter Opoku. They are all from Tema joined church. And then the Asbury Danwell church. 
who have all shown immeasurable support and others all deserve commendation. Please know that you are all cherished for your love and care. Professor Kofi Sefa Dede and his wife, Dr. Araba Sefa Dede, and Mr. Randolph and Professor Mrs. Akosia Perry remain great senior friends and counselors in time of need. My middle school teacher, Mrs. Mary Makuvia, attending the ceremony, thank you for showing such great interest in me, not just as your favorite pupil, but also to my family. My Shijioke Ekebusi has traveled all the way from Nigeria to be here. And Reverend Joachim Bugre, also my former student, has joined us all the way from his station in the north. There are some guinea fowls for me. May God continue to be kind to all of you for such demonstration of love. On this auspicious occasion, sad to say, I am missing three other dear friends due to ill health. Reverend Professor Sifas Umenyo, Adeline Enusin, and Francis Aquet. I know what they would have done to further embellish the greatness of this day if they were on their feet. Please, let them know that I pray the Lord's healing and restoration over their lives every morning. Our children, Theophil, Griselda, and Emmanuel, remain the joys of my life, especially at certain challenging times. I now have a daughter-in-law, Mami, and a son-in-law, Akwesi, whose addition to our family has been nothing but a blessing. We thank God for them and their families. Finally, to Theodora. The word marriage sounds too transactional and contractual to be deployed for our relationship. You are not just a wife, you are my friend and companion. Theodora has endured much, and there are very few women who could have put up with the sort of busy life I have run, spending hours in my study, writing, international travels, and speaking engagements. Theodora, you have prayed for me and you have encouraged and you have managed our home with diligence. I am very proud of you. The Lord has also given you a rare gift, the grace of discernment, that has helped me immensely. You are a very decent and spiritual woman and your sense of purpose in life has never ceased to amaze me. So, Theodore, thank you. I love you. And, and if I may conclude with my favorite verse in the Psalms, Psalm 34, verse 10. Young lions suffer want and hunger. But those who wait upon the Lord lack nothing that is good. Once again, I say with all my heart, thank you. Thank you to all of you for being here. Thank you, Dr. K.K. Sapon, for sharing such insightful words with us. Friends, bishops, my colleagues, loved ones, thank you for your gifts, material and non-material. And God bless us all. time to give God the glory uh, as we thank him 
uh, with our gifts. And so we take the offering at this time. And uh, we invite uh, Patrick Adakwe to lead us.
Shall we thank uh, Patrick Adakwe and Mary for coming all the way? Um, I know that we have over around the time and a lot of you have to leave. Please, refreshments are provided. So even if you have to go, please take something before you go. Before the offering is blessed, one of my most distinguished guests has to leave us.
Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields his fruit in his seed, and his leaf does not wither. In all he does, he prospers. Almighty and our living God, we thank you so much, God, for blessing us today and for the gift of your servants. Johnson, as the next president of this seminar, Lord, we thank you for all the graces you have showered upon him and upon all of us. We pray for abundant grace and strength for him. We pray that as of utmost importance, we teach him to always stay in your presence. Lord, keep Johnson away from sin and evil so that he can easily hear you when you speak to him. Give him special anointing for the, of the power of the Holy Spirit for this higher level of ministry. Give, oh God, a corresponding anointing. Fill him with your kind of compassion, love, humility, and holiness, so that he will be an example to all faculty and students that are nurtured here. May the lives of all faculty, staff, and students be made better because of your servant Johnson. Lord, protect him from physical diseases and illness. Lord, protect him from any satanic attacks. Lord, protect his family. Lord, protect his seminary during his tenure in a very special way. May this seminary continue to grow in all spheres, so that by the time he finishes his term, this seminary will be far better than he found it. Lord, may he do better than all of us who have gone ahead of him. May this great seminary become more excellent, more gracious, and more astounding during the CCS tenure of your servant. Oh, Kwabin, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will yield and bear fruit in your seed, and that your leaves never wither. May your leaves never wither. May your weak leaves never wither. And we pray, oh Lord, may the love divine which made us die. Keep Johnson, Kabuna, Samoyed, you do dying. And this whole seminary dying. Now and forevermore. We live here in your presence, oh God. Take all of us to our destination safely. And keep all of us praying for Trinity Seminary, where your servants are nurtured. In Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. And now the benediction. Let us go in the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain with all of us now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
Lord be with you. Please be seated. We'll take four group pictures very quickly uh, before we go on the recession. Uh, those on the platform will take one picture first. So please, can we take that picture as quickly as possible? Those on the platform, everyone. Thank you. And the family, the family of the president. Ooh. 